Welcome back. You're watching our CNBC TV 18 special. We're bringing to you the highlights of the CNBC TV 18 Forbes India BMI Advisors CEO poll ahead of the budget. We asked uh, our uh, viewers or CEOs who were polled which sector and infrastructure should get priority. 45% believe it should be telecommunication, followed by 39% saying roads and highways, ports at 26%, airports at 23%, power 23% and railways at 20%. Uh, Mr. Sondi, uh, you know, roads and highways coming in at number two, telecommunications at number one. Uh, I recently interviewed Mr. Gatkari and he was very clear that, look, I've signed contracts worth $75 billion already in the first two years. I'll do $150 billion over the next two years. And I promise to do $900 billion only in roads and highways over the next five years. I mean, we have seen significant changes uh, as far as the roads and highways when is concerned in terms of performance. He's got now a target of 40 kilometers a day. Uh, you know, do you think that this is going to be the big spending area for the government? It, it should be. This is one sector which has actually led growth and kick-started growth. And we must ensure that this moves because physical connectivity within India is as much important as any other form of connectivity. I'm a little disappointed that Railways is getting a 20% mm. rating simply because safety has to be a no-brainer. Yeah. And we must invest in safety. Railways haven't got uh, capex earlier. So I think from a safety standpoint, whatever is absorbable by the railways year on year mm. must be provided. Mm. Telecommunications purely from a digitization standpoint and what we are discussing must get a thrust because we are seeing a little bit of backward investment in telecommunications. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, you know, put this question to you and, and we did this story which was a CNBC TV 18 exclusive yesterday uh, and this is the first time that the railway budget is going to be merged with the union budget and there will be an allocation of about, we understand this is of course source based information, of 15 odd thousand crore rupees towards a safety fund uh, and that would be the need of the hour given the fact that we've had now three uh, pretty uh, unfortunate accidents over the past two months. Uh, so do you, you know, how A, do you see the railway budget changing now that it's going to be part of the union budget? And what do you really see as far as the railways are concerned? Well, I think, uh, like you rightly said, and uh, I'm sure the information is absolutely on the dot, that uh, safety should be now given the uppermost priority, topmost priority, as far as the railways is concerned. And if there is a fund being created, that can only be good news. And I think the railways uh, will continue to get, uh, you know, the, the required attention, even if it is within the budget. But I think uh, because it's, it's, it's critical to the entire uh, reform game plan in that sense as well. Uh, coming to your... Uh, the, the sectors which, which need to get attention, I think I'm in broad agreement with the results of the poll as well. Uh, telecoms, roads, ports, I think there can be no debate that these are things which need uh, urgent attention in terms of uh, budgetary thrust. And I think that's, that's key because if, um, uh, only a mixture of all this can give you the, the required uh, you know, thrust to keep getting growth back on track. And I think the government will be mindful of that and the budget will show us some signs, clear signs on that. Okay. You know, 2017 is going to be a big year as far as uh, uh, tax is concerned. Uh, Mukesh, GST, GAR and the implications of GAR on investments. In fact, 42% believe that GAR will have an impact on investments. 20% say it won't have an impact. We've just sort of amended our DTAs with Singapore and Mauritius. Uh, 2017, tax to dominate? Well, I think there are too many changes uh, at the same time. Some of the changes... Uh, you know, have been planned over a period of time and they have to come in. So, for example, GAR, notwithstanding the criticism on the GAR, I think all of this is timed very well because we saw amendments to three treaties. Uh, we have the uh, G20-led base erosion and profit shifting initiative also kicking off. India is very much a part of it. So, I don't think that the government is going to kind of uh, rethink insofar mm. as the GAR implementation is concerned. Of course, there are still concerns uh, as to the administration of the GAR regulation. But I think we can do away with many, many other things. So, you know, uh, you know we have change in accounting year, which is anticipated. Yeah. Implementation of uh, Indian accounting standard, which mm. is going to have an impact on mm. computation of tax profits. And then we are going to have the... Uh, you know, accounting standards for tax purposes. And to add to that, we have GST. Mm. So I wonder whether we should bring about all these changes in the same year. Now, today's 
uh, revised guidelines on place of effective management suggest that it is going to be uh, implemented or rather it's already being implemented. So I think we should certainly reconsider, uh, the government should certainly reconsider if there is a grand plan to change the accounting year. Maybe mm -hmm. the accounting year change is guided for larger fiscal reasons, mm -hmm. but for tax purposes it is certainly going to result in an onerous obligation. Well, it's good news for you and Gokul, isn't it? <laughs> so if 2017 is going to be a big year as far as tax is concerned, it's going to be a, a, a big year for, for you and, and I'm sure you'll, you'll still have smiles on your faces. Well, even, even though you'll have more work. Well, you should remember if there is one business or profession which is inflation uh, or risk-free, yes. uh, it's the accounting and the legal profession. So I, I'm sure that... Uh, we will not be impacted and the more changes and the more complexity, uh, you know, clients need us more. But I think uh, on a more serious note, you know, what does that do to the business, you know, because all of this really speak out in your ease of doing business yeah. index uh, and uh, investors will wonder whether all of these changes yeah. were required. So you should not have a law just because it's fashionable to do sure. so. So I really question the wisdom when you have laws like place of effective management. Yeah. We all know that these are anti-abuse provisions, but have we done an impact analysis to assess how much tax leakage is happening okay. for you to justify bringing a place of effective okay. management? So I think that adds to the complexity. Well, uh, uh, Gokul, quick 20 seconds, final comments. I think uh, GAR is something which can be addressed as far as the concerns of investors is concerned if the government was to bring out its much talked about guidance uh, which it had promised to investors and also try and assure investors that now that they have amended the treaties that they wanted to amend, mm. uh, treaty override is not the subject matter and the target of GAR. Okay. Uh, I think that will help. That will help. Well, uh, remember this budget also comes in the context of elections in crucial states. So the Election Commission issuing an advisory to the government. It's a confusing advisory saying that don't announce uh, schemes that are specific or could influence voters in specific states. But you never really have state-specific announcements in the budget anyway. They've asked the government to follow the 2009 advisory that was issued ahead of the general elections then. So we'll see whether new schemes are announced, whether there are changes made to the tax regime, incentives given to industry and of course breaks given to the middle class. But all of that and more will be revealed on the 1st of February. Join us then on CNBC TV 18 for our budget coverage. For now, from all of us, goodbye and many thanks for watching.